So this is bond value and we're going to look at using your calculator. Now let's recall from the overview of uh, calculating present value that the general form of the present value for multiple cash flows is just the sum that's uh, f of all of the cash flows from 1 to t, t being the number of uh, cash flows or from 1 to the period of time t. The future value, so the cash flows you're going to receive at any given point in time, divided by 1 plus r to the power of n, n being the number of periods. So this is what it looks like visu visually. You're basically bringing all of the cash flows back to today, calculating them, adding them up, and that is our the value. So that's a, the visual that, uh, that we were talking about. And we're going to be doing this now with, uh, with bonds. Now, what's different about a bond? As you can see, this is a typical uh, timeline of cash flows. You have uh, payments from periods one to n, n being the total number of payments. And at the end, you get your uh, face value or your par value of the bond. So it's got regular periodic payments combined with a bullet payment. If you look at it, the bond's value can be broken down into two components. You have the one, and that's, as you can see, an annuity for n periods. And then, of course, we have the other portion, which is the single payment at the n uh, periods from now, the single period at the end. Now let's talk about the terminology that uh, we're going to need uh, and that we read often in these questions. We have face value also called par value. This is the value of that final payment, usually $1,000. If it's not specified in a question, you can normally assume that's the case because that's a common value in uh, North American bonds. You have yield, also called yield to maturity, short form YTM. That's the annual percentage rate of the return that the investor will receive given the present price of the bond. Because as the price changes, the value or rather the return on a bond will change because of course the, the payments for the duration of the bond are fixed. Then we have coupon. This is, the quoted, this is quoted as a percentage of the face value and it represents the regular payment. So coupon, even though it's quoted as a percentage, it's not related directly to the interest rate. It is, uh, you take the coupon, you're going to then multiply that times the face value and that gives you the annualized coupon payment. Now, of course, if you have a semi-annual pay bond, that means you're going to be paid twice a year. So your payment is going to be half the amount of the of this calculation but of course you're receiving it twice a year so the annual payment is always coupon rate times face value maturity is the length of time or the term of the bond and it is also related to the number of payments n uh, and it's of course the same number when n is an annual payment it's going to be twice as high as n if you're being paid semi-annually so that's again something we'll have to look at in a calculation when we make an adjustment and finally we have the price but of course that is the price um, it's going to be calculated as the present value of the bond now using a calculator things are quite a bit easier. A lot of textbooks still have cal have equations that you will the are to use to calculate the value of a bond. It's good to know where the derivation of that equation is, but quite frankly, all you need to do is know how to use your calculator. Now there are five variables and you can s solve for any one of those five given the other four. These are n the number of periods and keep in mind, we're talking number of periods, not number of years. So you may have to make an adjustment if the bond is not an annual pay bond. I, or on uh, the calculator that I use, which is a BA2 plus, Texas Instruments, it's I oh, divided by Y is uh, the button. That's the interest rate per period. Again, the period is not always a year. PV, that's the present value. That's today's price of the bond. PMT is the regular payment for each period, and that's where we're going to use the coupon rate. And FV is the final bond payment, the face value, or the par value. Now, three things you need to focus on when solving for any of those five variables. First of all, you have to remember to enter a negative value for the present value. 
uh, is for the price. That's just the way the calculator works. I'm not going to go into the detailed workings of it, but that's uh, you keep that in mind. It does m mirror the actual cash flows if you're an investor, or it would be the other way around. So the payments are positive, the future value is positive, but just keep that in mind so that your calculations are correct. You have to enter values for four of the values variables and the calculator will just simply solve the fifth one. Now I always try to keep in mind that you should enter a uh, value even for variables which are presumed to be a uh, certain standard value. So, so often the future value is 1000 but it's good to enter 1000 so that your calculator doesn't have, in case it has the wrong number, uh, it will give you a wrong answer. So it's good to just enter values into the register. Now if the bond pays semi-annually then you have to double N, you have to half or have the uh, I or I over Y and the coupon payment is also halved because you're going to have double as many payments twice a year. So we're going to try a sample problem. Magenta Finishings offers 5.2% coupon bonds with a semi-annual payment and a yield to maturity of 4.68%. The bonds mature in six years. What is the market price of the bond if the face value is $1,000? Okay, well, let's look at what we need to calculate. We clearly want to have price, so that's the present value that we're solving for. So the semi-annual means we're going to change the number of payments, so we're going to double them. So n is 6 times 2 because it's 6 years, so we're going to have 12 periods. The yield to maturity per period is halved, so that's uh, the, now the yield, even though we have two values here with percentages, the coupon is, relate, is not related to the uh, interest or the rate, it's the yield to maturity. So the I over Y is going to be 4.68 divided by 2, 2.34. And then finally the coupon payment is also halved. We're going to take 5.2% coupon times the face value of 1,000, and we're going to divide that by 2. So here we have it. Now we have N, I over Y, payment, and future value. So now we just solve for present value. Then we have minus 1026 and 93. Now you, I'll point out again here, you'll notice it's calculated as negative. Uh, that means the price of our bond is $1,026.93. So thanks for your attention and I hope that helped.